Welcome everyone to Clarky's Closet, a podcast. Hello everybody, it's Mark Clark here again. And today I'm going to be playing you some of my musical comedy songs. Today is my first one, my very first musical comedy called Pirates, Parrots and Penguins. A nice little band of mine. Which has actually done quite well for me, uh, everybody. It's nice to see you again. I should say hello. I'm being very impolite. Hello. That's less impolite, which means it's more polite. Less impolite is litosis, in case you're wondering. I'm an English teacher. You can always tell they're a pain in the ass. Uh, what was I going to say? Yes, this was my first musical comedy, and actually my most successful, as with a lot of the times, you know, your first work is the one that does best for you, possibly because this is quite a gentle panto. The first song I'm going to play you was actually written in uh, the late 80s, uh, 88, 89, I think I wrote it. It was done for a children's album, and this was one of the first ones I wrote called Pirate and Parrot Duet. It gets quite a few plays on Spotify and all the other platforms. And I, I quite like the song. I got to do the, the Pirate, hey, oh, that be so, and the old, you know, way it used to be done. What was the name of that actor who did it? There'll be people out there who will know which actor it was, but he sort of made the, the Pirate from the, the South. Arr. And this is a story about a pirate who has got a penguin on one shoulder and a parrot on the other. And the parrot and the penguin argue constantly, and he's stuck in the middle of them telling them to shut up the both of you. So I thought I'd start with a pirate and parrot duet uh, from Pirates, Parrots and Penguins, and hope you enjoy it. Patience now, bone o' me, fine feathered bird. Together, my dear, we shall sail the Atlantic. Patience now, bone o' me, fine feathered bird. Together, my dear, we'll steal gold from the Spanish main. Arr. I am a pirate. Chuck is me name, I belong to no country Me legs made of wood and me hooks made of steel Me heart's made of stone, I've this parrot for company on And soon, very soon, we'll have golden doubloons For a galleon we'll board and their treasure we'll hoard So patience, young bird, we'll be rich very soon on That was quite a success because, you know, kiddies liked it as well as parents. And that's always the trick, I think, if you want to get sales. If you want to get sales, bums on seats, folks, you've got to entertain the parents. So, uh, yeah, the story is basically that Captain Chook and his parrot and his penguin 
Hey, such a day, a Jewish penguin. And he's got a parroty parrot, you know, a sort of thing. You heard it in the song. And uh, yes, in fact, the penguin complains straight away after that song that he never has enough lines. He never has anything to say. So, you know, you get the general timbre of the thing. And yes, they're afloat in the middle of the Atlantic and they are picked up by a ship. They, in fact, it's not actually their ship. They've lost their ship. That's why they're floating around the Atlantic. They come across Captain Cambridge's, Came Bridges, I'll try that again, ship, and they retake it. They mutinied on Cambridge, and this Captain Chook is now in control, and he finds himself in control of the Princess of Tasmania, which is not a boat, but is in fact a princess, and she and her brother, who constantly eats apples and fishes off the side of the boat, they're on their way to a rocker Steadford. They were a thing back then in the 90s, because this, actually, I should have told you, this was actually, although the song was written in the late 80s, the play was written in 94, and we played at Windsor High School in 1995, Windsor High School, New South Wales, Sydney, Australia. Good, good old comprehensive school, Windsor High School. You did get told to get stuffed a lot, and that's putting it politely, but, you know, lots of lovely kids too who didn't tell you to get stuffed a lot. And this one, the next one is called The Salt of the Sea, and it's one that's a sea shanty, a 3-4, where everybody's heave-hoeing on ropes, et cetera, because Chuck has his crew back. He's retaken his ship, and he's got his crew back, and they're off to Tasmania. Arr. Hoist up the mainsail, we'll sail with the wind Tonight brings us promise of shanties and gin For life is too short to be caught in a port I the salt of the sea in me begins, boys She is restless and bored and too fast to ignore Take the salt of the sea in me veins So come new adventure, come fate what ye will Come baby Jones Locker Heaven come hell, for life is too short to be caught in a port. I the salt of the sea in me veins, boys. I am restless and bored, and I long to explore her. The salt of the seas in me veins. Heave-ho! Heave-ho! So come what ye will, come ye heaven come hell. And another R for good value. Yes, and of course there's a love story involved. There's always a love story. This is like a really cheap Gilbert and Sullivan, this show. And there's a love story, of course. There is Jack Tarr falls instantly in love with the princess from Tasmania. She was actually pro- betrothed. That's the word I was looking for. Betrothed to a rich land or owner. Land owner in land system? No, a land owner in lawn system. But I'm in trouble. I know if you're from Tasmania, I'm sorry. Launceston. This play actually played in Launceston. We actually went there and watched it. It's one of the greatest pleasures in my life. One of the greatest pleasures. I won't go into any of the others, but one of the greatest pleasures in my life was going down to Tasmania to see a performance of Pirates, Parrots and Penguins done uh, in quite a different way. They didn't actually have the penguin and the parrot connected to the pirate. They had them running around the place, and I actually think that was a better idea. But you don't want to admit other people have better ideas than you, do you? You never want to do that. You should, but you don't. You don't want other people to have better ideas than you, but they do very often. Anyway, getting back to the point, they fall in love, but just before they fall in love, 
just before they fall in love, because I think I've included the song where he, Jack Tar falls in love with her too after this. This is the song sung by Gwen, who, of course, becomes the love interest for the captain later in our story. But uh, Gwen is singing a lullaby, and the lullaby is about how love is life's happiest tune, and that's by coincidence, is the name of the song, and this is it. Special mention goes out to Jessica Sempronio, who uh, was at our school. Actually, she sang all of the songs that I recorded at that time. There are there are in, actually in total there are eight musical comedies, and she provided the female vocals for me for all of them. And I thank her very much for that. Very nice voice she has there, and you'll be hearing her voice again at uh, various times in the course of my podcast, if you care to listen to them. This is uh, the first of those eight musical comedies. I'll be taking the songs that I like the most from each of them and playing them for you. Not all of them, because I don't want to bore the hell out of you. I reckon about 30 minutes or thereabouts is enough time for you to listen to my song. So I've chosen about four or five, five or six from each one. And the next one is, as I told you before was when Jack Tarr comes down from the crow's nest where he's been doing duty up there, making sure that he that he's scouring the seas. And he comes down and, of course, sees the princess asleep there and falls immediately and irrevocably, irretrievably, intractably in love with her. He cannot not love her. And this next song, which is kind of a Latin American fiery thing, upbeat, Jack Tar, the good-looking guy, comes down and finds the good-looking woman. You've got to, they've got to be good-looking, of course. Nobody likes ugly people. That's why nobody likes me. And this next song is called Caramba. Never seen a girl like this Should I steal a little kiss Or would that be too bold Cos Christopher Columbus Would 
not a soul the seven seas. Had he had a girl at home as sweet as she is? Come on now, open up your eyes. There we are. I've never seen a girl with such lovely eyes and caramba. I'd love to love a girl like you. Caramba, I've heard about Helena Troy. A thousand ships and all, but boy, oh boy. I bet she didn't have a smile like you And Vasco da Gama Who sailed the Cape to India He would have never sighted Africa to leave you Come on now Hold me tight There we are I've never seen a girl with such a lovely smile songs and the frivolity continue. Load of twaddle, really. You know, there's letters of the alphabet from the alphabet islands. And, you know, you've got to get parts for as many kids as you can. There's usually about 20 odd kids in these plays. And uh, they're good fun. Everybody gets a bit of, everyone gets a few lines. You know, it's not like there's a chorus as such in many of them. It gives an opportunity for lots of kids to play parts, those that can sing, those that can't, those that have got singing parts that can't sing, (laughs) that sort of thing. Always went for actors rather than singers. If they couldn't quite sing well enough, well, what the hell? I provided all this backing, you see. They got all the backing that you can hear, but with their voice on it. Yeah, so that's the way it generally worked because we didn't have an orchestra at that time. We did get one later, actually. In fact, this play was put on uh, oh, some years later, and we did have a um, a, a, a uh, what, what am I th- what am I talking about? What am I saying? I'm saying absolutely nothing. Yes, we had an orchestra and played Pirates, Pirates and Penguins again. In fact, this play has played twenty to thirty times across Australia and New Zealand, of which I'm very, very proud. This next one is "That's the Way the Life Must Be." It's sung by the captain. He's lamenting life and the fact that it's got lots of ups and downs in it. And as soon as you get up somewhere, up in, up in the clouds, something brings you back down. That's what this song's about. Also, it was on the children's album that I bought out some years ago. And this is it. He, of course, is about to fall in love with his long lost love. He doesn't know it, but Gwen, the handmaiden, is his long lost love. Anyway, that's round about the time he finds out about this, in fact, because uh, this is song, I think this is the 10th song in the show. There's usually about a dozen songs. This is song 10, I'm pretty sure. That's the way that life must be. High, low, speedily and slow. You stop and then you go, then you stop again. Then it's up. Down, roller coaster round. The 
That's the way that life must be. See, saw, you rise and then you fall. You miss and then you score, then you miss again. Then up, down, roller coaster round. That's the way that life must be. We fell in love one Saturday. One Saturday night, we two. We fell in love one Saturday night. On Saturday night, our love was true. On Sunday, we were through. Good, bad, you're happy, then you're sad. You slip on down the slide and climb up again. And then it's up, down, roller coaster round. That's the way that life must be. We fell in love one Saturday, one Saturday night, we two. We fell in love one Saturday night, on Saturday night our love was true. On Sunday we were through. Sun high in the summer sky, then suddenly the winter. Around. That's the way that life must be. Laugh, cry, I really don't know why I found my Saturday, but by Sunday she had run away, and that's the way that life must be. Oh, that's the way that life must be. It's all terribly exciting, of course, because at this point the captain realizes that he had a one night stand in Plymouth with a beautiful young woman many, many years ago. And he'd never been able to find her since. And of course, yes, you guessed it, folks. It turns out to be Gwen, the handmaiden. So they realise they're in love. And there's a song called Springtime in the Valley. And everybody's happy. And then Captain Cambridge comes back without a boat through the audience with his pirates. A big pirate fight, of course. And we finish off with all of the kids up on stage with a positive message. And this song is called Dream and Make the Dream Come True. Pilot, 
are indeed. And there ends part three and the last of Pirates, Pirates and Penguins. I did enjoy playing the pirate and then caused a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a... People, people get very funny, don't they? Like, but no, I couldn't get any boys in this first play. I had no trouble after the first one because I think the boys will realise there are lots of pretty girls in the show and they could be in the show and uh, you, you get the idea anyway. So they were being pretty silly staying out of them. So I had to play the male lead and some teachers didn't think that was such a good idea. You know, oh, what's he doing putting on his shows? You know, he puts on, he writes his shows and then he's in them. Who does he think he is? Well, I suppose I can see it from their point of view, but basically the show wasn't going to get up unless I was going to go in it, so I did. And I didn't really have to do much after that because the kids all started coming through. We established a culture at Windsor High School in the 90s of putting on original plays. And this is the end of that show. So I thank you all very much for coming along for the ride. Yeah, we've got close to 30 minutes. Didn't want to go on too much longer, did you? But next week we are going to have the next play, uh, which is Ponsonby's Castle, about an English upper-class twit who's only got three trees left in his forest. Present, really, when you consider the situation of the world right now in the year 2022, third year of the bloody pandemic. Anyway, that aside, I'll have to write one about the pandemic, the musical. Yeah, okay, well, I'll stop thinking about that now. And I will finish today's show with the intro song, which is coming up right now, and I shall see you next time. This podcast has been brought to you by Mark Clark. If you're interested in any of my work, please go to markclark.com.au. Pleasure to see you again next time when we go to Ponsonby's Castle for the podcast of my second musical. Bye till then.